So, a lot of these systems, the first systems which were built were all these uh, systems which were using these uh, para using this parabolic trough, and there was a big uh, uh, program in California back in the 1980s, 1984s, which basically subsidized these uh, systems. And there are 11 of them. They are commonly represented by this uh, name, SEGS. Uh, and uh, you know, the, if you are driving down, and uh, you know, if you are going from here to Vegas, right? You usually take I-5 till Bakersfield. Then you take 58, right? And then you go and take uh, I-15 to Vegas. Right? So this part between uh, 58 on 58 and I-15 that's an excellent spot to I mean that's an excellent route to locate a lot of these systems these are all located over there so the next time you're going to Vegas from here on a road trip I'm giving you where to stop and uh, go look at them these are you know, pretty amazing to look at just uh, uh, go there and so this one is located at uh, Kramer Junction there's another one at uh, Daggett there's another one which is on I-15 uh, in Nevada, very close to Nevada, I'll show you. So this one, the first one which were built were these uh, these parabolic drones. And uh, uh, so these were, you know, these have been around for uh, more than uh, close to 30 years now. And if you look at the satellite imagery on them, it will show, you know, a few broken pieces like this one over here. So you can see the mirror over there has broken. But you know they are still uh, alive and running a lot of them. Um, so it's again a good good uh, pit stop on your road trip to uh, Vegas, right? So, oops. There's another one. This is another trove one. This is uh, in Nevada called the Solar One. And you can see that on these mirror, right, you have this, this rod flowing through the center, which is going to absorb all your sunlight. And this essentially moves as the, as the parabola moves. Right? So it, it's moving with it. So usually these systems use either oil or you know, some other fluid. They usually don't use water because it's hard to, the vapor pressure, etc., and water is not suitable for uh, rotation, especially in these pipes. Uh, the other form of this parabola is essentially not to have a parabola. Instead, break it down into these uh, individual mirrors, which are, again, these combined make up the parabola, right? But you don't have the expense of putting a big dish, right? And also what you can do now is that if you have this linear Fresnel system is that you can route these power, uh, route these uh, water lines from here, right? So you can, uh, essentially, you don't need to move it around as you move your as you move your lenses below, so as you move as you move your mirrors below, you don't need to move the uh, the water or the the, water, the pipe which is absorbing along with it. So another advantage is that when there's wind blowing, so if you have a big parabola, it becomes challenging to manage that. Versus if you have this broken down uh, system into multiple of these uh, uh, Fresnel mirrors, it becomes uh, much more easier. Yeah. Yeah, it could be water, it could be molten salt, uh, it could be uh, uh, something else as well. I mean, basically, its purpose is to uh, purpose is to heat, collect the heat, and then run the turbine. And I'll talk to that when it. Uh, in traditionally, it used to be water, but nowadays, uh, it's, uh, people are switching to molten uh, molten salt, and. Uh, so you raise a good point. You know, usually, where are these systems located? These are located in regions of high uh, direct normal sunlight, right? So regions of high DNI. And where are those regions usually? In deserts, right? So what's usually not found in desert? Water, right? So it doesn't make sense to run these systems on water. And also, uh, I'll talk that water is not ideal when you want to build up that uh, capacity to store uh, store the heat for a, for a few hours. Again, molten salt is much better for that. So, uh, and you get higher efficiency with molten salt. 
so then the thing which are recently became becoming more popular and are actually way popular in um, in Spain and there, there are a few which are now getting installed in uh, in uh, US as well the thing which is now becoming popular is using the Sun and uh, you know and then using multiple of these uh, mirrors and these mirrors are called as heliostats so they track again the Sun in both directions uh, and then they reflect the light onto this tower and uh, that's where you flow your fluid and uh, then heat it up and then you let to drive it. Right, so let me, so this is uh, the closest and one of the fanciest to reach to. So this lies uh, uh, on your way to Vegas as well. And uh, it's one of the larger ones uh, in, in US. It has three of these towers. The uh, biggest one is 200 megawatts. So this is huge capacity, 200 megawatts. There are two other of them which are 100 megawatts. And this is just 40 miles uh, off uh, Vegas. And again, that storing heat capacity that I talked about, right, that you can store it for a... So this one uses uh, molten salt. And it, again, makes sense to store it for seven hours because the sun goes down in Vegas at, you know, six, seven, or depending on what. And then the strip lights up, you know, in the night, so it can it can power the strip uh, through the night, right? And so let me show you where this one is. And you know, you should promise me that you should you will stop there uh, on your way uh, on your next road trip. So this is uh, you know this is where you take the I five, you take then fifty eight, and this is right off. Uh, uh, right off this I-15, which you take uh, on your way to, uh, on your way there. Right. So let me show this one. Right. So you can see the three towers over here. Right. And then if you zoom in, this is I think an old picture in 2012. So you can see one of them is already in installed and in production. So this one you see all the mirrors are there. Right. The tower is at the center. And then. This one is another one, which is still not completely installed. So you see some glass panels, but it's not uh, completely installed. Right? These are just beautiful to look at. This you can even spot it uh, possibly from I-15, but do take a diversion and check it out. It's pretty awesome, and you get extra credit in the class if you do so. Right. So. <coughs> Again, so some things to think about is, you know, should the height of this tower be high or should it be low? Right. If you make it high, this this system in particular is located in uh, in uh, in the Mojave Desert, very close to the Edmund Air Force Base. So the, a lot of the planes, army planes, um, uh, play, they fly over from there. Right. So they definitely don't like seeing these things. Uh, when they are uh, flying, especially if these things, these mirrors go off axis, and instead of concentrating that light uh, onto that uh, receiver, if they point it at the at a flying airplane, it can bring the plane down, right? So, again, those are things, some things you need to. So, plant size is usually uh, uh, controlled by that. A very important thing which people don't realize a lot of times is that. You know, which direction do you think these heliostats should be pointing at? So if you're, if you're, let's say you're, uh, you know, very close to, uh, uh, let's say, sunset. So your sun is over here, right? So now, which direction should each of these, uh, each of these heliostat uh, pointing at? Should we, should it be pointing directly at the sun, or should it be pointing away from the sun? Right. So. Let's say my tower is, is located uh, somewhere over here. Yeah, so it depends upon which side of the tower you are on, right? A thing which is on this side of the tower, it will be essentially almost uh, flat, and it will be reflecting it. Versus something which is uh, uh, which is located uh, uh, on the other side of the tower, it would be completely vertical. And now it would be you know trying to reflect it back uh, to the tower. 
So each of these mirrors, they are arranged in the circular fashion, but they each are not, they are not at all the, you know, they are not at all the same angle. Each of them is, depends upon the direction of the sun, and it depends upon their positioning with respect to the tower as well. Because all of them are trying to, uh, you know, they are trying to essentially reflect this light uh, onto the tower. So you can think it's, a, it's you know, if you have a big system which has uh, 100,000 of these mirrors, it's a complex, uh, you know, algorithmic problem how to track each of them, right? And these are things which are not, these are not solar cells. So you don't want, like, uh, to place a very, uh, a feedback system into each of them trying to figure out uh, what's the maximum power point or anything, right? You want a quick assessment where should the position be so that I reflect the light back to the tower. So again, there are, there's an opportunity there, and there are companies which are trying to uh, exploit that uh, opportunity. So uh, this eSolar is a company. So it designs these uh, uh, heliostats such that uh, they are, you know, it's trying to apply, uh, trying to commoditize these heliostats. So these heliostats, they're trying to make it very cheap, where you just have one fixed size and you have uh, fixed reflectivity, just like you know the mirrors that you're used to seeing in your house. See the heliostats like that. They don't have any individual feedback on the, each of the poles. The way they collect feedback is that they have these towers somewhere, you know, not the main tower, but they have these extra towers on the side. And these are just imaging towers. What they do is they shine light, you know, they basically shine light on the tower, and they try to take its picture somewhere else, and they try to figure out you know, what's the optimal angle which should it should be placed at. So instead of placing that uh, photodiode or placing that uh, feedback on each of these heliostats, you try to figure out on a system level and uh, try to minimize their cost. And it's pretty neat uh, engineering. No, it has to have 2D tracking. But if you do 2D tracking on each of them, it would become quite expensive, right? So a big challenge is how to do this 2D tracking cheaply for these, uh, especially these solar towers. So let me show you a few, you know, let me show you a video, we have time for a video. Bright Source's solar thermal system uses thousands of motor-driven mirrors to track the sun as it moves across the sky, focusing sunlight onto a boiler atop a central tower. Using proprietary software, Bright Source's control system precisely manages the positioning of each mirror, capturing as much energy as possible and maximizing output on the boiler. When the concentrated sunlight strikes the boiler's pipes, it heats the water inside to 550 degrees Celsius, more than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Steam from the boiler is then piped to a standard turbine where electricity is generated. From here, transmission lines carry the power to homes and businesses. Each mirror in a bright source power system generates enough electricity to power one home, and nothing is wasted. In order to conserve precious desert water, 
Bright Source uses air cooling to convert the steam back into water. The water is then returned to the boiler in a closed loop. In addition, the steam produced by Bright Source's technology can be stored, extending the solar day to meet demand after the sun sets. The technology can also be hybridized with fossil fuels like natural gas, further increasing a power plant's output and reliability. The steam can also be used for industrial purposes, like enhanced oil recovery. Every day, the sun shines down 5,000 times the amount of energy needed by the entire planet. Bright Source Energy can harness this abundant resource efficiently and reliably, while providing jobs, energy security, and clean power for the world's growing energy needs. So there are other videos on e-solar as well, and you know how they, again the the differentiation with them is they try to uh, again optimize that software and not use individual sensor at each of these uh, each of these video stack and try to do it on a, a system level. So if this is one of their plants, so they have done a few plants here, and they've done one in California, they've done a big one in India, and. You know, you can individually control the position of each of these uh, mirrors, right? So, if you think about it, this, this is the world's largest uh, display, right? You can essentially use it to display anything you want. And, uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's in fact the world's largest uh, display, these uh, CSP, these tower-based CSP systems. Now, the highest concentration uh, is uh, obtained when you use a dish. And uh, so each of these dish, which is, uh, which is you know, uh, so this 86 meter square would correspond to around uh, eight or nine uh, meter in diameter of this dish. And uh, each of these dish gives you around 25 kilowatt of power. And uh, if you use uh, 60 of these dishes, you can get a megawatt kind of uh, power plant. And if you think about the efficiency, the maximum efficiency is, is you know, of these systems is 31 percent. So if you compare it to solar cells, it's, you know, it's not, it's comparable. And there's no semiconductor used over here, so, you know, why not use this? I mean, semiconductor-based PV is not the only option of converting solar to electric, right? This seems like a very viable option as well. And, uh, the, the one of the challenge with this disk system is that it's not easy to integrate the thermal storage into the disk system because you have these individual disks and uh, it would be difficult to build a central storage for all of them. <coughs> so now the next thing I want to talk about is uh, storage. So remember we want to man manage that uh, phase shift between our load and the sun. So what is done is that you collect this uh, collect this uh, uh, heat uh, in the form of uh, uh, the steam, and you have these big chambers which people bring you. These are uh, containers of uh, uh, steam, and uh, uh, apparently you can build them very cheaply because uh, uh, all you require is you know again uh, the same thing. It's very it's cheap to store heat. It's very expensive to store uh, electricity, right? The example I like to use is think of uh, uh, a water thermos, right? I think of this hot water thermos, right? How much does it hold? It holds like similar to my laptop battery or similar to my iPad battery, the same amount of energy. It costs a few bucks, right? How much does my laptop battery cost? How much does your laptop battery cost? Hundreds of dollars, right? Or at least sixty, seventy dollars. So heat storage is very cheap, and uh, usually pretty efficient too. Uh, so you can make these large chambers, just like you know a back uh, those trucks that you see carrying gas. They look just like that. They uh, can hold this uh, steam. The challenge is to you know design these systems so that they can hold this at high pressure, high temperature, and then you know they can essentially release it out again in the form of, so they can hold this uh, water, so since it's high pressure, it's above the critical point, and then you again convert it back into the steam. And you can do this at efficiency of around 93%, this conversion uh, of you know, storing 
heat and then uh, again relieving it. So you lose a few percentage point over here, but you know you are phase shifting with respect to your grid, right? You are phase shifting the sun to match your grid. So the sun-based system, the steam-based system, they only go to temperatures above, uh, you know, close to 250C. They don't go at very high uh, temperatures because it's difficult to manage uh, systems with steam at high temperatures. And also they have storage capacity of, uh, of you know, maximum of around two hours. So they can shift it by two hours, but not much. You know, steam is... Uh, as you know, it's you know if you boil water, it cools down easily, right? It's not the best uh, uh, best uh, storage material for storing heat. 